Welcome. My name is Mike Robbins, and today I'll be sharing a video with you about a new book I'm writing titled PowerShell 101, The No-Nonsense Beginner's Guide to PowerShell. The book starts out by talking about how I got started with PowerShell, and this is an entry-level book for anyone wanting to learn PowerShell. It focuses on PowerShell version 5.1 running on Windows 10 and Windows Server 2016. I often see presenters at conferences and user group meetings already already have PowerShell open, and people who are who have not used PowerShell before often have a lot of questions about where'd you find PowerShell, how'd you launch it, and so on. So that's where chapter one begins by focusing on where to find and how to launch PowerShell, along with solving a couple of the initial pain points that new users often experience. So what do I need to get started with PowerShell? Well, all modern versions of Windows operating systems ship with PowerShell pre-installed. So where do I find PowerShell? Well, the book covers Windows 7 and higher as far as where to find PowerShell. Now, this is a Windows 10 machine, which is, like, like I said, the focus of the book. What I recommend is just in the search bar here, type in PowerShell. We'll go ahead and run it. I want you to notice that the title bar says Windows PowerShell. Now, in the production environments that I support, I have three Active Directory user IDs. I'm logged in with one of those, and it's a domain user local user. I don't recommend logging into your computer as a local administrator. Even if your, your job duties are an administrator, an IT pro, a developer, whatever. Because by logging in as a local administrator, you're defeating a lot of the security mechanisms that have been put in place to uh, keep your environment secure. But when you run PowerShell as a standard user, you actually run into some problems. So we'll start out by checking the status of the Windows Time service. So I can see that it's running. So we're actually going to stop the Windows, attempt to stop the Windows time service. And you'll notice I received an error message. And it's a very cryptic error message. It really doesn't give me a clue about what the problem is. And this is kind of the initial point where new users start getting confused. Well, what, what needs to happen when you find PowerShell and launch it, you need to right click and say run as administrator. Now, since I'm logged into my computer as a non-administrator, it's going to prompt me for credentials. Now, this is where my second user account comes into play. It's a local administrator domain user, so it has no elevated privileges in the domain. It's not a domain administrator. Okay, now this time you'll notice that the title bar says Administrator Windows PowerShell. So keep that keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and check the status of our Windows Time Service again. You'll notice it is running just like it was before. We'll run the same command to stop it again. Okay, we didn't receive an error that time. It actually stopped. Now running PowerShell is elevated as an administrator only affects commands run against the local computer. It doesn't affect if you're running a command remotely against a uh, against a server. So if you're if you're administering remote machines it really doesn't matter. But one thing to keep in mind is that anything you run is from this elevated version of PowerShell actually runs elevated. So if you need to like in order to edit the host file on your machine, you've got to run, say, Notepad Elevated. You could run Notepad from PowerShell here, and then you're good to go to edit the host file. But what you don't want to do is run something like Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, or Google Chrome from this elevated console and have it run in Elevated, and then you're going to be more susceptible to drive-by malware uh, because it's just like logging into your computer as an administrator. Okay, so you may, you may not be sure about what version of PowerShell is running on the computer. There is actually an automatic, there's 
numerous automatic variables in PowerShell. And one of those is PS version table, which returns a hash table. You'll notice the PS version, the first entry there is 5.1. And that means I'm running PowerShell version 5.1. So if you're if you don't receive anything from this uh, automatic variable, then you're running PowerShell version one, and you probably need to update. But let me caution you on updating the PowerShell version. Maybe you're updating PowerShell on a Microsoft product like Microsoft Exchange, for example, and it heavily uses PowerShell in the background. I mean, everything in the GUI runs PowerShell commands. So certain versions of Exchange and certain Service Pack versions only support specific versions of PowerShell. So maybe it doesn't support the latest version. So be sure to check with your application vendors. And that's to include your third-party application vendors. And usually a third party, unless they're really using PowerShell, they honestly don't care. But what you'll find a lot of times you ask a third-party vendor, hey, can I update the PowerShell version on this server that your software runs on? And they'll say, no, 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 you can't update PowerShell on it. And to be honest with you, they honestly, they usually don't care about the PowerShell version, but when you update PowerShell, you're going to need to update the version of the .NET Framework on the machine. And a lot of times they don't want the newer version of the .NET Framework installed. So keep that in mind as well. So check with your application vendors before installing any new software. And then also what I would recommend in addition to that is, is test the new software to include a new version of PowerShell in a test environment before installing it on a production system. Okay, so one of the other problems that that new users often run into is problems with the execution policy. We'll go ahead and clear the screen. So the default execution policy on all Windows client operating systems is restricted. And the book actually has, uh, has a, a couple of tables in chapter one. One's got the, uh, the version of PowerShell for all the supported operating systems and the, uh, the default version and the supported versions. But then in addition to that, it's got one for execution policy. It shows all the execution policies for the different Windows operating systems that are supported. Now, there are a few server, the newer versions of server actually are set to remote sign by default, but all the clients are restricted. Now, I recommend setting the execution policy to remote signed on your client. Otherwise, with the default execution policy, you can't run any scripts. So when we... Let's go ahead and jump over to the uh, integrated scripting environment. And we'll type in ISE on the console. And this is why I only need one shortcut on my taskbar because I'll launch the PowerShell console. And then if I need the integrated scripting environment, which ships with, uh, with all client operating systems, and it also ships on the server version if you've installed the full GUI on your server, which I actually do not recommend. I recommend server core on your servers, but that's a, a topic for another time. So go ahead and type in ISC. And let's take the command we had before, the get service command, where we're stopping the uh, Windows time service. And this command, as we know, it'll run fine, even from the ISC, no error messages. Let's take and save this as a script. We'll save it in our demo folder. We'll call it stop time service dot ps1. So scripts have a uh, a ps1 extension, and we can run this from the IC. We can run it from the console. It's going to be the same error message. It's in our demo folder. So if we try to run this script, we get an error message. And this one, unlike the previous one, this one has a really good error message. It tells us exactly what the problem is. And not only does it tell us the problem, it actually gives us a URL to a PowerShell help topic about execution policies. I recommend go ahead and take a look at that execution policy help topic 
because by setting the execution policy to remote signed, you are reducing the security on your computer. Now the other thing is maybe remote sign doesn't work for you when you want your environment to be all signed. You want all scripts that run to be signed. And that's fine too. So the commandlet for changing the execution policy is set execution policy. So we'll go ahead and change it to remote signed. You get the similar message again that points you to the uh, to the about help topic. So we're going to say yes. We'll clear the screen, press the up arrow a couple of times, and now we're actually going to run the uh, the script again. And notice it ran without error. It actually ran because the execution policy now allows scripts to be run. So. Let's jump back over to the book. So currently only chapter one is available. I'll be releasing chapter two in the next few days or so. My goal is to release a new chapter at least every couple of weeks because when you're writing, I tried to write, I wanted new users to be successful without being overwhelmed. So I'm having to pick and choose what does a new user need to be successful without giving them all the inform without telling them everything and overwhelming them. So it's it's more difficult to write a short book than it is to write a long book and just tell somebody everything. So at the end of the chapters there's a review questions and there's also a recommended reading section and what the recommended reading section does is it points you to help topics in PowerShell that are that uh, reference the content that was covered in the chapter because to be honest with you there's no sense in me rewriting the help topics when you can just go read those for yourself if that's what you want to read but you may be there's so many help topics and so much information contained in those help topics that I wanted to provide new users with a book that from an IT pro standpoint on what I have learned that a new user needs to know to be successful with PowerShell. So anyway, go download the free sample version. It's at, at this point in time, it's the complete book, but that will change momentarily. And the price of the book will probably go up slightly once it's complete. But it, uh, my goal is I'm not looking to necessarily make money with the book, although I did want to charge something because I can speak from personal experience. I've got so many free books, I'll probably never read them all. But if I actually pay for something, I'm much more apt to use it. So if I pay for a book, I'm much more apt to read that book. And the other thing is, I plan to take any proceeds that I do make and just put it back into the community in a roundabout sort of way. I'll be using any of the proceeds so that I can go speak in person to cover my expenses, gas money, hotel, whatever, you know. So, and when I go speak at places, if I want to give the, uh, the audience a free copy or if I want to give them a discounted version, I can do that. But anyway, I appreciate you watching this video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.